with caution. What is up my drunken fighters, Caution here and welcome back to another video. This time I'm gonna go show you guys 5 tips to hopefully <laughs> improve your gameplay in Street Fighter 6. So let's start off with the first tip. The first tip is a very interesting one. Imagine you have 3 super bars. Um, you want to keep your super bars, but you want to go crouching fierce into Light Kick Bakai, for example. Now, something like this can happen if you input to motion. So we're going to start with down for crouching fierce, and we're going to go to forward. Um, and then we do quarter circle forward to get DP, because the animation is forward to down to down forward forward. Um, at least that's how I always, I always learned it. But then something like this will happen. You are sometimes going to get a level 1 super instead of actually getting Bakai. And you know, that's, that's a real problem. Because, you know, you, you don't want to lose that bar. Uh, because you want to keep it for level 3. But, you know, sometimes you you may not have two drink levels, so you don't have access to Bakai. And, yeah, so you want to do Arrow Kick instead. So what you can do is actually start with down forward instead of down. And then you do the exact same thing how you would do Arrow Kick. So I'm just adding a quarter circle forward. It's pretty much all I'm doing. And as you can see now, it's not coming out. So if I start with down, I'm getting it because I need to input forward um, to get, you know, to get the DP. But because you already put input a down before that, that's why you're getting the super. So if you start with down forward, then you're actually skipping the down input. And that's why you're not getting it. So if you want to prevent that from happening, that is something really good. What it's also really good for is imagining, imagine our boy Ken is, let's make a new recording. You know, he's just gonna jump at us and would do Jumping Fierce. Jumping Fierce is so strong because it hits you downwards, it hits you up from so high, it is really, really strong. So sometimes when you be standing and you wanna go for DP, for example, it might happen, as you can see, I'm doing the input, but I'm getting hit before I can actually do it. So, that means, you know, I am going to eat a full, full combo, and that's not something that we want to happen. So, to prevent this, we can also do the exact same thing. We can start with down forward, to down, to down forward, and we're going to get the same result. So, as you can see here, I'm going for down forward, to down forward, and we're still getting the DP. Now, why is this important is because this means we can actually do a DP from a crouching animation. Meaning that we have more time to not get hit by the jumping fierce. So I can also do this from, uh, I even got the auto correct there. I can also do this from down back. You know, that also works. Why is he, what? Okay, and we got we had some technical technical difficulties there. It's so okay. Why is he jumping back? What the? Anyways, you get the idea. The so you're crouching while doing the DP, meaning you're going. You're there's a, a less less chance of getting stuffed by jumping normals. So use that to your advantage. All right, next up is a drive rush. So punishing drive rush sometimes can be very tricky because it, at least it happens to me. I I'm, I'm definitely want to hear your experience, how you've experienced drive rush so far. But in my case, sometimes, let's say I, I'm I'm pretty sure a drive rush is coming. So I'm, I'm going for, let's say, standing medium kick or crunching medium kick. And I'm buffering that into light kick Bakai or anything else. Sometimes in, I had some situations where the freeze frame of the drive rush actually ate my crouching medium kick input and Bakai came out instead. Obviously, Bakai has a lot of startup, 18 frames, so I got stuffed by the drive rush normal. So there's a very nice trick you can actually do to prevent this, and that is double tapping your buttons. 
Now, for people who don't know what this is, this used to be an old um, Street Fighter 4 technique, also still used in Street Fighter 5, but I guess in Street Fighter 4, plinking was a little bit more famous. Um, but what double tapping actually is, is, it speaks for itself. You're actually double tapping the button. As you can see here, I'm double tapping the button and, you know, I'm still getting only one button. It's normal because it takes a while before the animation of the standing medium kick ends. But in this case, that means you actually also input an extra command to get the same result. Meaning if your opponent would go for drive rush, I am going to get... Uh, my standing medium kick, there's gonna be, there's double the amount of chance that I'm going to get the standing medium kick. Meaning that I'm going to be pretty much guaranteed to get what I actually want to do and not be influenced by the uh, freeze frame of the of the drive, uh, drive rush. So keep that in mind, try to implement this into your gameplay, it really, really helps. Um, you know, if I could get the punish as well, that would be really nice. Um, sometimes I even struggle doing this because like I used to I used to do this a lot in Street Fighter 4 But I didn't use it that much anymore in 5 or in 6 But the moment I realized That Drive Rush actually eats your inputs. That is something I Started doing again. So for people who are actually curious how I'm doing this um, it's, it's pretty it's pretty simple. You have to get used to it, but it takes a while So I'm just using two fingers actually to um, go for the go for the move so instead of like because i used to, i i used to press buttons with two fingers at the same time uh because i got used to like plinking and stuff like that but if you want to do like a successful double tap the best thing you can do is just tap it twice with your fingers that that's all you have to do and you know it's, it goes pretty fast you can actually do this um pretty easily over all the buttons you can do this during combos as well but it's just like you're flicking your 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 two fingers at the same time like like a little bit delayed and I'm using my middle finger first, and then followed by my, um, what is it, index finger? I think it's index finger. Help me out. I, I think it is. Anyways, you, you can see what I mean. So, like, get used to this. It really helps you out with, um, with punishing drive rush. And I found it to be a lot more successful when I'm using double tap. Okay. Moving on to the next topic, which is buffering specials or drive rush. So, let me give you a small example here of, let's just, um, let's just put Ken on, I'm gonna make him jump into crush and medium kick. That's, that's all we're gonna do. So, what I mean by buffering specials is, let's, for, let's say for example, you can see my inputs here. I'm actually doing standing light kick into uh, light punch palm in this example. I could also do, uh, you know, Rekka for example, it doesn't matter. As you can see, it doesn't come out. I'm not getting the standing Rekka. I'm doing the motion really fast. That's one thing you have to do because if you do it too slow, then obviously it's going to come out. But this is what we mean with actually buffering. Um, you can go even more a little bit in depth. Uh, for example, you could do uh, palm and you could buffer the super. So as you can see, after the palm, I'm doing the super animation, the level 3 super, but I'm not imp I'm pressing the button. So for example, if I... This is a very nice way to learn hit confirming off of buffering. So sometimes you could be like, holy shit, these professional players, they are godlike. I don't know how they're doing it. Well, this is something you could do. So if I'm doing palm, so you can see that if he blocks, I didn't press the punch button to complete the level 3. But you can still see that I'm buffering the motion of level 3. So I'm still buffering that in any case, um, even on hit or on block. And if I would see the hit, for example, the only thing I have to do is press punch. And that makes it a lot easier to go for hit confirms. Now, I still believe that this is a, a very uh, hard uh, hit confirm to do. But because like, even in my case, sometimes I would probably mess it up just as you saw there. Um, but it's just an example of showcasing you guys what is possible. So if you're going for the animation, you see that he's getting hit, you only have to input punch. That is a way that buffer works. The other way is what I was trying to show you from the start, but I'm just chaotic and I go all over the place. So if you're buffering specials from a normal, on whiff, nothing is going to happen. But if we actually hit Ken, then that, instead of a buffer, that's gonna turn into a cancel. 
and that means that the palm is going to come out and it's going to connect so yeah this is a good way to learn footsies for example like you're safe you're just whiffing and you can see this in my rank matches as well sometimes i'm doing this and there's always a buffer behind it and the reason for that is like if they're doing footsies and if that stunning like it connects i can get the punish same can be said for drivers as well you can go for drivers as you can see uh, you can also do it with the parry since the update but i don't really like that i'm just doing it old school uh you can do crouching medium kick for example and you can buffer forward as you can see i'm buffering forward and then in immediately inputting block again and if it hits then the driver comes out if it doesn't hit then nothing is gonna happen and this gives you time to hit confirm and do whatever you want afterwards so yeah, try to input this into your gameplay as well. You could go for Rekas instead as well, something like that. Anything is possible as long as you're doing the motion fast enough. But in this case, as you can see, sometimes uh, Rekka is not going to work. So Palm is way more reliable in that regard. Okay. Next up is not going to, there's not going to be any examples here, but learn from your replays and the reason why i'm saying this is because there is so much intel to be had from replays check your replays where what did you get hit by um did you did you lack anti-airs did you for example not see a mix-up are you seeing that your defense is struggling for example are you waking up with buttons a lot on defense are you um, taking way too many throws and you're getting shimmy from time to time try to study your replays and learn from your behavior now this is a little bit of a mix into the next point because the next point is actually use recording modes and the reason why i'm saying this is because if you study your replays and you find out that a specific situation is actually um, you're getting mixed up. Let's say a Blanca. Let's say Dalsim or like any any plus situation you're struggling with dealing with or Ken's Jinrai kicks for example or anything like that. You can use record mode to recreate that situation that you were having troubles dealing with and then trying to find answers for that accordingly. This is how professional players also train for matchups and try to gain matchup knowledge. They just recreate the situation that they saw in ranked from watching a replay and then they're recreating that in record mode and try to come up with specific stuff. Now, Kimberly is actually a really good example of why I actually why the record mode is good for example. So now this move for example, I thought in the beta was very annoying to deal with. Uh, because you had to guess every single time and if you went for DP for example sometimes you know the DP in this situation that works but if for example if she goes for the cross up animation you get that that happens as well but DP in the same situation is it's gonna whiff so I was like one would work against this and I figured out that pretty much against every situation unless she uses the jump back command which is this one if I'm not mistaken yeah that one is not punishable at least as far as I know um, but it also means that we have an option for these other options as well so actually standing jab as you can see standing jab is going to prevent both the cross-up jump afterwards and the regular jump it's not gonna punish the jump back but that's fine because we reset back to neutral and that is perfectly fine but as you can see you can actually use this for standing jab into that and normally the sweep should work but I think that one only works if they go for the cross up jump. What you can do is just for go for that, go for DP for example or you can just go straight into sweep. That works as well but you have to time it a little bit. There we go. And you can get a drink level off of that. So this is why record mode is actually useful because you can, can come up with punishes that are going to help you deal with the character or find out what the character's weaknesses are in specific moves so yeah look at those replays recreate those situations if you're dealing with something specific of a certain character and also just learn from your bad habits from replays figure out what's going wrong and use that in the training mode to improve on that specific part
All right, and that is it for now. There's gonna be more tips in the future, but for now, that is going to be it. Next up is going to be the Blanca match video. Stay tuned for that one. And don't forget, as a special surprise, I'm gonna announce it here, but I will make a post later on this week in YouTube, on YouTube as well. I am going to do a live stream with some Jamie rank matches and, you know, maybe some training room or anything like that on Saturday starting around 5 p.m. UTC. Maybe a bit sooner, maybe a bit later, but I will let you guys know in on my YouTube channel. But for now, thanks a ton for watching. Don't forget, as usual, to stay cautious, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.